I don't feel the pressure that much as people expect. Um, um, because I've always been on a level where winning was a must. So uh, I don't feel that there can be put more pressure on me than what I put on myself as a player when I was playing. The difference as a coach is that you, you cannot influence that directly anymore. So that's, that's the part where the emotional aspect uh, uh, is, is a bit higher. Um, because you need to delegate, but at the end, I think if you prepare, prepare the team well, if you have done everything that you needed to do as a coach, then of course um, you trust that, that things will will go. And if, if players don't deliver like it happens many times, uh, sometimes when I played we didn't deliver uh, exactly what the coach wanted or whatever, then, you know, that's that's that. What can you do about that? But I think that you should um, do everything uh, in terms of preparation uh, from a technical point of view, point of view from a from a mental point of view um, to prepare the team, uh, to prepare the staff, to prepare the environment, uh, because also the communication with the media uh, before the match is very important, after the match is very important. Everything can have an influence on, and all these things for me were just really from day one a natural process. Uh, actually, I was, uh, you know, not dying, but I wanted really to. I was eager to uh, to have the possibility to make the decisions and to be uh, influential in certain things what you can have only when you have that role right so um, uh, yeah people were uh, like you know you should build it up slowly and start low and well i i don't really agree on all of that uh, i think that if, if one has and it's not only for football in general if one has the talent if one has the ideas if one has give him or her the chance and then and then judge and I think that at the end uh, it was a very very positive um, um, let's say results that we obtained uh, with the team uh, not only by the numbers but also the way we managed to play the matches of course a privilege and an honor to to be able to be in that position and knowing how many others would, would love to be there uh, uh, it, it was it was uh, fantastic to be able to make a contribution and to get you know help help the club and the team out of the situation they were. It's never a, a nice situation to come in the middle of the season because uh, I do think that uh, Allegri uh, was you know was a good coach, but sometimes things just don't work out anymore. Um, and it was unfortunate that, that it had to happen uh, at that moment uh, because the plan was to come at the end of the season, at the end, the new season. So um, I anticipated what was agreed upon to come when uh, his contract was finished. But uh, yeah, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, you know, for the fans, uh, for me, it was really great to uh, to have that experience and um, and to have left something positive at the end uh, for the club. Abiati, Bonera, there were quite some players that I played with, but uh, Kaka, besides that he was then my player, he, he, he was a close friend as well. It was the easiest thing in the world. Um, I think it's really the approach that I have in general with, with, with the players that, you know, <clears throat> first of all, for me, it's, it's a person first and then you're a player. So having that approach takes away a lot of the things. I mean, uh, I don't have to explain them, but I'm the coach and I make the decisions and, and vice versa. Uh, that they are the ones actually doing, you know, making the difference, uh, playing. So having that respect, that mutual respect, uh, makes it very easy. And then um, very clear conversations. Uh, it helped me also to help him. He was not in a very uh, positive moment uh, as well on a personal level. And I mean, uh, and he was fantastic professional like I know him. He was a great supporter in terms of a uh, great leader. Um, yeah, it, it was actually quite easy. What is sometimes a bit uncomfortable uh, for the players, maybe more, <clears throat> even if I never obliged them to call me with any name. But, but uh, you know, uh, the respect for me is in, in, in attitude and, 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 and the words that you, how you speak with each other. 
but you know to call me coach or that, that that but at the end when you're really professional that that that's really just a, also a very natural thing and with Kaká it has been an amazing journey together um, we enjoyed it very much and um, uh, he was a great help for me and I and I think that I also helped him to feel better in in, in those months it was just a different challenge uh, uh, more difficult than, than 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 Milan because I don't I didn't know the club as, as, as that I did in, in Milan um, before I came in Milan I had my all my points how to address a lot of things already on paper um, that I couldn't do with Depo so I had to go in and then you know assess and 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 uh, then address all these all these things uh, but it was a really wonderful process. Um, a, a team that was lack of confidence, completely lacking confidence, uh, physically, mentally, morally. Uh, the environment was down. It was just a big depressed uh, situation, completely. The pitch reflects what, what's, you know, how people feel off the pitch, what they do off the pitch, but also how you train. Uh, let's say off the, besides the matches, how you get into the match, with which confidence. Um, well, as I said, uh, for me, there was a big lack of organization internally, and I'm talking about staff, people that were there but didn't have a real role. So my first thing was to get into the organization, to have if everybody understanding what they needed to do from an organization point of view, how the communication would roll uh, among ourselves. Um, and then, uh, I, well, the first week I was more observing and getting information. And then, so having done that part, then I started to uh, uh, do the intervention. And, uh, and the first thing was the organization. Um, when to do the video analysis, how we do the video analysis, when we do individual conversation with players, group sessions, um, changing drastically all the things that have been done before, time of training, create a shock effect because otherwise you continue in the same routine and you don't break the, you know, the negative spiral. And um, so we started training twice a day, uh, not because we want to kill them. It's not about how strong, but just the commitment and the focus of training and getting a lot of time with them so I could understand who can do what, who is who. Uh, that I didn't need when I went to Milan. I knew everybody practically so that's what I used in the first 10 days and then um, working individually on, on on the most important players getting the leaders together uh, giving them you know my full commitment uh, for them to be playing and you know the things that I wanted from them in terms of the spirit that 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 we want to have in terms of the training the intensity during the training um, which is uh, fundamental when you have when you have the group of leaders that that support the philosophy, support the coach. That is half of the job uh, in terms of getting the team in the direction where you want. Um, and that we did quite fast. Um, it was very clear. Uh, the will for them to to work was fantastic. I mean, uh, even if they probably were not proposed. Uh, uh, before the same things that I was proposing to them, they had a really positive reaction on, on the things we, we wanted uh, to do and that we, we did in terms of exercises. Um, they really worked hard and the first match um, it was unfortunate we lost it, but uh, we, we, we had an incredible intensity, incredible aggressivity. Uh, then the confidence doesn't come from one day to another. Uh, also because there's a new coach, the ones who were playing before, some I took out. I was just looking at who was performing that week. I couldn't. I, I didn't care about what was happened before. I said, from today is a new day, and you have to earn your position in the team. Now, of course, you don't take out your best, you know, players, uh, um, because that would create a whole different thing. So, uh, I think that was very important to give a clear indication that everybody has a chance again to come and play. Uh, that motivates the whole team um, because the players before there were many that, that didn't even get one minute until that stage uh, others were in and out in and out and so after the first match it was a great reaction second match still a good reaction um, 
and then you know you get in the face of the doubts because result was still not coming. And I think that was the moment where uh, the biggest job was for me to keep them believing in. Um, I always said the result is is consequence of what you do. How do you win games? Winning is is just by saying, but you have to do things to win games. So my 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 focus before matches in terms of communications with them was like that. Uh, I would focus on the good things they did, even if we lost. This is the improvement. This is the, 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 the process that we're going through. And it's just a matter of time that the results will come. But we need to keep believing. So then you get in the motivational state of things and, and using a lot of visual, using people need to be, be fed with, with positivity because it's easy to be negative. It's, it's human nature to be negative. Um, and, and as a group, uh, we have, uh, you know, constantly being uh, feeding them with positive images, positive thoughts, positive feedback, criticism, but constructive, and also knowing with whom, when, and how uh, to do it. And a lot of times we would do it as feedback, where we where we get them to give their feedback on what should be improved and not. So it's not you telling them all the time. So using all these psychological, I think, um, uh, tools um, have maintained the team believing in what we were doing. And then we got to a certain stage where I think in the third, the third match, we really killed it. I mean, it was a fantastic match, 0-0. Zero, zero. We lost the penalty. So then the luck factor was not there. But the luck you need to also call upon yourself. And there were some players actually who were from La Coruña, who felt the responsibility even double. Um, so at that point it was really, really nice challenge. It was an exciting one. Um, I, I um, yeah, me and my staff, I think we had a great time. Uh, we, we created a cohesion among all staff members, the guys who were there already. Really fantastic. Um, I think that was the best, uh, uh, yeah, of all the experience, staff environment that that has been created in such a difficult situation, um, and that was felt by the players. Uh, so there was all positivity. A certain moment, uh, you know, some people would have interviews uh, from the outside, former coaches of Deportivo, or whatever, and they would say, you know. The team is playing. It, it, it doesn't show to be a team in, you know, fighting f to stay in uh, in in in, uh, in La Liga, um, because the confidence was growing each match. Even if the result were, I mean, it took us like eight matches before we won the first one. I don't really think that many coaches would have survived uh, eight matches without winning at that at that stage. You know, it was fr frustrating. Because you know, frustration comes to the coach as well. It comes to the staff because you, everything is, and then still not being rewarded. Uh, but we kept hanging, and, and uh, at the end, uh, things were turned around. The results started coming. Uh, was not uh, was not enough, and also our competitor made more points in, than Madrid and Barcelona uh, in the last, uh, I think, uh, 12 matches. So that was amazing for them. <laughs>